All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us again today. Welcome to Real Estate Disruptors. Today we got Carlos Reyes and Sal Shakur. Am I saying that right? Almost Shakur. Shakur, sorry Shakur about Shakur that. Shakur sounds better. Like yeah. Tupac yeah. Shakur. Definitely. <laughs> He's like an Arabic version of him. Hey, man, whatever works. So, uh, so Carlos and Sal, they're with National Cash Offer, and uh, not too long ago, you guys were on TV. What was it? So we've been on uh, we've been on Channel Twelve, uh, Channel Fifteen, Channel Seven, and um, you know it, it, it's um, we we assisted this lady. Um, very 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 quick uh, scenario here. Uh, this lady was going into pre foreclosure. Um, she was already kind of you know doing bad financially, um, kind of headed out down the wrong road. Um, hit up a, um, um, what was he, a, like a handyman? It was a, a, it contractor, was a contractor. contractor. Yeah. And yeah. then um, the guy just ran off with her money. Um, yeah. And then, <sighs> you know, yeah. That's crazy. Lady. She's amazing. Crystal Clug. Um, and um, and then she reached out to us, um, pulled up, you know, sell my house fast, um, as is or whatever, on Google search. And then we were one of the top two uh, because we, uh, for the most part, rank um, top one, top two on yeah. Pay per click for those of you that don't know that, and she found us, and um, and we came through and, and, and we we saved her, you know, we, we bought her property and gave her cash to walk out with, and she was just so appreciative, and we're still friends now, you know, so cool. So um, some of the ch uh, news stations picked up her her story. Well, the main thing was that she she actually didn't expect anything back. She just wanted to get out of the house. Uh -huh. She was gonna leave the house to to foreclosure and not expect anything, but then when she called us, she just wanted us to pay it off. And not hurt her, hurt her credit. credit yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, um, Dora is actually one of our acquisition managers. Um, she assisted her, and, she, and we told her that no matter what, we're going to make sure that you're going to get money and you're going to get a head start uh, on your next, you know, move or whatever. Which yeah. she was able to buy a car. She, she couldn't and moved um, to a new. She apartment. couldn't. Wow. She couldn't believe that because, see, this lady, you know, she didn't ask for money. She just wanted her property to be safe from foreclosure. But we knew that we were going to be okay, you know, on, at the end. At the, we only made, I mean, we, it was a complete, like, we did put about 20000 into the rehab. Mm -hmm. Only made, what, like twenty five, twenty six, right? Yeah, uh, around that. And, and which, it's a Maricopa. Which actually so wasn't a wholesale. It's tougher so. to sell a Maricopa, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, Not yeah. a lot of people want to buy a Maricopa. So we were going to wholesale it. Yeah. So what happened is because she owed more than we expected, and we promised her that we're going to give her a certain amount of money, so it would only make sense if we flip it. Right. Just so we can keep yeah. keep our word, and which we did. So she's happy. Yeah. She and, she yeah. was honestly it was so unexpected to her. Like she she's like, oh my god, you're gonna give me money, you know? Yeah. And uh, she was able to purchase a uh, or put the down payment on a brand new Nissan Altima. Um, she bought furniture for her next place. You know what I mean? Took care of her daughter. So a lot of great things come out of that that one specific situation of hundreds that we deal with. That's awesome. All right. So uh, before I forget, so. If you guys want to find out more about Carlos and Sal, it's nationalcashoffer.com. Um, and then real quick before we get started, you know, I just want to let everyone know today's uh, podcast is sponsored by OfferFast. So, um, you know, are you guys tired of having too many places to go find properties or you guys want to be able to blast your wholesale deals before you hit the road? Um, we got a solution for you. Everything's in your fingertips. So uh, get all your properties in one centralized location and get push notifications so you get pro uh, notifications of properties immediately. Uh, so download OfferFast today. Um, so one, you know, before I, uh, before I met you, uh, one thing that, that hit me, uh, it was like a week or so ago was a picture of you with your Nissan rogue and all the bandit signs, yeah. you know, tell me about that. So, uh, it was a 2006 Nissan rogue. Um, I had a regular nine to five job. Um, I was what were you making, doing? um, so I was managing third party motor vehicle services. That's how I met him. And we'll get into that later. Yeah. Uh, and also, also I was managing a third party motor vehicle services and we also did like title loans. Right. So, um, I was there for 14 years. I was there for 14 years. I actually brought the third party motor vehicle services to them, um, as a second, as a second stream of, you know, of income mm -hmm. from aside from the title loans. And it was okay. I was making a living. You know, I was making anywhere from sixty to seventy thousand a year. It was okay. Um, but I knew that there was more. There was more to it. You know. So um, yeah, my, our first abandoned signs. I don't know if we had the budget, the marketing budget. So his girl, so my uh, my right. fiance, yeah. grabbed a bunch <laughs> of um, black markers, and she would knock out a hundred abandoned signs a week for me, and then oh. I would go put them out from eleven p.m. to uh, two a.m. Yeah, so hustle. I mean, they're not having the the budget for it's not an excuse. Our marketing budget was probably like seven hundred a month. 
close to none. What's our marketing? Bu- what's <laughs> it was our, close to none. What's our marketing budget now? Uh, I think we're at sixty thousand, close somewhere. We, we spend that, sixty yeah. grand every month on marketing, like it's, like it's water. All right. <laughs> so yeah, it, we've come a long way in three years. Very cool. Okay, so I mean, we kind of touched on it a little bit. How did you guys get into real estate? Oh, it's funny. Go ahead. So it was a. So Carlos met me at, at the car. I was, I was, I owned a car dealership and he was, um, actually marketing the, for his company, which is pretty much it was his system. company at that point because he started that thing, like that department and, and that was his baby. So he was marketing the third party. Yeah. MVD. Vehicle service, yep. cool. Yeah. And of course he was working there, but he treated like it was his own. So that's, I, I immediately saw that this guy, man, he's a hustler. Yeah. So, and I, I just opened up a real, uh, you know, the, the, Kind retail, of the, the, retail the retail side, side instead of, of the wholesale uh, yeah. side of the the cars, which is very similar to the to the house business, uh-huh. and then we just became good friends. Yeah. Um, after that, for a year, you know, I probably ruined his liver and he ruined my liver drinking, <laughs> um, and then we're like, you know, let's just, let's let's work together, and um, I had a condo that I sold. Uh, I bought when I had a younger age and I rented it, and he had a house that he just In sold. Levine. Yeah. yeah. And we thought about every single business besides real estate. Coffee shops, um, car wash, right? Everything. I mean, restaurant, right. yeah. you name moving companies. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you name it, we thought about it. Okay. The last thing was the real estate. We didn't even think about real estate. And ironically, we made the money that we're trying to start our business with from real estate, right? So right. Uh, before you know it, we're like, he's like, well, how about we, um, we do some real estate? And I'm like, uh, well, we don't know much about it, but we know we flipped. Um, and he's like, don't worry, we got this. Uh, so we started as a hobby. We start fixing and flipping well, as a hobby. We started reaching out to a bunch of heavy players at that time. Oh, absolutely. There was nobody that would give us the time of the day like it is now, right? Yeah. So that's why I always give people that reach out to me like that guy said on my live feed, he says, this guy answers every comment yeah. because I know what it feels like to be on the other side. Yeah. You know, three years ago, I mean, you know what I mean? I, I was on the other side asking the Cody Sperbers mm-hmm. uh, when he would go on his live feed on on, um, on Periscope or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was literally at my job just taking notes down, you know what I mean? Um, asking, you know, the, you know, the, the Delgadillo brothers, et cetera. Right. Which, you know, they're, they're good, good people, but, um, I get it. Like people are busy mm-hmm. and you know, their business does consume them. So uh, when a little guy's trying to ask questions, it doesn't always get answered, but, uh, I've, I've made it a point. Uh, I'm nothing. I'm, I mean, I'm nothing. I'm a, to compare to Gary V, but have you noticed Gary V answers a lot of his people? No oh, matter how he? big he's this guy, we love Gary V. Yeah, this guy's one of the realest guys out there. He's wrong. entrepreneur. Yeah, but one thing that he you know prides himself in is he tries to answer his audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. He tries to provide value to them. So I do the same thing, and I know Sal does the same thing uh, because we've been on the other side of that. So right, and it's pretty cool to remember. You know, like to, to to never forget where you came from. For sure. And that you can pull people up to where you are. That's, so that's sure. pretty cool. Another thing I, I heard you say too was that. You know, don't worry, we get, we'll figure it out. And I love that attitude, right? That's the entrepreneurial attitude. And, uh, sure. and uh, Brandon Burchard, I heard him speak very recently. What he said was, that's what real confidence is. Mm-hmm. Confidence isn't knowing how to do it. Confidence is knowing that you're going to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I mean, love we, that. We, we're problem solvers. Every business yeah. owner is a yeah. problem solver. That's, you we, wouldn't be in business if you, f- you have everything figured <laughs> out. You kind of figure it out on the go. Right, exactly. You just yeah. get better at it. Yeah, uh, my mom used to always, you know, growing up, tell me, you know, hey, son, you know, because I grew up with a single mom um, and we'll go over the back, you know, the background story, I'm, I'm sure. But um, she used to tell me, you know, son, she was a single single mom with three kids. And she was she said, you know, we used to run into a lot of problems, especially financial problems. Right. But she would be like, don't worry, you know, don't worry, son. There's a solution to everything but death and taxes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly and I clearly remember, I'm like, you know, we wanted uh, a 27 inch Toshiba, you know, the boxes back then, right? The little, the boxes. Like, mom, we want a 27 inch Toshiba. Okay, you know, um, all right, well, you know, I don't have it right now, but I'll figure it out. Goes to rent center gets it from rent center you know, pays uh, weekly payments or whatever. So uh-huh. again, you know, I learned a lot from her. She would always figure it out. Even right. though she didn't, she only made $8.25 an hour, she would figure out ways to make her kids happy. So I, I got I, that everything that I know is, is from her coming up. So. That's very cool. So um, what were some of the struggles when you first got in? It's like, all right, we're flipping. 
or were wholesaling, you got into the business, what were some of your early struggles? Well, I, just like any business, when you first start and people, they smell blood, uh -huh. you know, this it's just the way a business is. And we were just new and we got taken advantage. I remember when we first found our first property. So I asked a realtor Jesus. friend, a family friend, and then he appointed uh, one of his guys and he, he kind of, he was, he was a good realtor. He just was not very experienced and the communication was hard, you know, the language barrier and everything. And he found a property for us from a wholesaler and we didn't even know what that was. So we're like, we paid yeah. top dollar for it. Then he charged us on the buy uh -huh. and of course on the sale. <laughs> and uh, the title company, although we were investors, like we're starting off, we didn't get charged as investors. And um, the hard money loan, we almost paid 18% or something. Then we dropped No one was looking out for you guys. Definitely not. <laughs> no. in, on, in every single turn we took, it was like being taken advantage of. Yeah. We managed to make some money. Well, that's good. Of course, yeah. But it, so it was a learning I think experience. he's. I think he's... Uh, He's, he's the way he's describing it is actually uh, a very nice version of it. <laughs> we pretty much got raped by everybody. We yeah. did, yeah. And I'll give you an example. The realtor that we we had we had we didn't have a lot of money to start mm -hmm. out. We we wanted to flip right, and you know eventually we learned what wholesaling was, and, and that's when you see the bounded signs and all that. Yeah. So uh, it was very early. So our first fix and flip. This guy finds us a property for 140, ARV 180. That's actually a very tight squeeze, right? So hopefully you don't have to put money into it. Right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we, 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 we did. So so this guy, this realtor, pays the wholesaler six thousand, and then he says, "Write me a check for three thousand." We're like, "Oh, okay, yeah, sure, you no know, problem, no problem." Yeah. Is that what, <laughs> so, that so, now we're, you know, <laughs> so now we're at one fifty. You know what I mean? <laughs> then the uh, title agency is like, "Okay, it's gonna be three grand to close." But wait a minute, it's only a hundred and forty thousand dollar property, three thousand? It know? was definitely in the threes. Yeah, so, okay. Like, yeah. Sounds good. We're at one fifty two, <laughs> right? Then the realtor's like, Okay guys, well I'm gonna charge you six percent, you know, I'm a three percent to list it or whatever and you know no big deal. three percent to the buyer agent. Yeah. So by the time it was all and I personally, he knows this, had to subcontract everything. We broke the granite. We <laughs> We messed up the cabinets the first time. When the granite broke, the moment we're holding you were there, the granite, actually, yeah. <laughs> we were carrying that the granite, granite. It was as like tough as granite looks. Pringles. It tears like <laughs> a piece of paper right down the middle. Yeah. Okay. And we looked at each other. Um, you want to talk about some struggles? You know, we looked. At, keep in mind, we don't have a lot of money here. We just freaking cut the granite in half trying to load it on into the either the kitchen area uh -huh. and uh so there goes that we got to redo the granite and uh the cabinets we hire this uh this this guy a friend a friend of the family or whatever this guy makes the uh cabinets look like mustard yellow it was disgusting right so it was a complete just it was a complete mess yeah. by the time it was all said and done i think we made like 12 grand on our first flip yeah i mean honestly you didn't lose money in your first one, which is like the rule of thumb. <laughs> I think that's still today the the, the, the least we've ever made is and yeah. on a flip. Yeah. Yeah. On a flip. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah. And and that's crazy. So uh, we're just very, you know, we're thankful to God that we actually got through it. You know, thank, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to get through that nightmare because, you know, you it's trial and error, right? Things do begin to get right. better and you begin to learn more uh, just like any other trade. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to ask each one of you guys this question. So I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. What is your superpower? My superpower? Why don't, uh, I, what, so why, why don't we answer each other's question? Yeah. There you go. Because we're what's, business partners. All right, what's yeah, the that's, why, yeah. that's why I looked at him because he knows yeah. we complete each other in business. So uh, I'll tell you what Sal's superpower is. Uh, we call Sal, uh, and he's actually pretty well known around the country now. Oh, yeah? As far as podio goes, okay, and not only podio, you know, uh, so we call him Sal the Sy Sal the System Shakir. Uh, <laughs> this guy can set up systems like I've never seen anybody set up systems. Mm -hmm. This guy just makes everything flow. He is he is an integrator. Uh, he is an accountant. He is a marketing guru. You know what I mean? This yeah. guy just does it all, right? Right. He just sits there on his computer. This guy will be in his computer up until what? Three, four a.m., five a.m. Depends. Maybe on the not day. sleep, but yeah, <laughs> maybe not sleep sometimes, right? So, and you know, another uh, 
definitely superpower of his is he is a great businessman. He's a yeah. great businessman. I have learned a lot from him because he keep in mind he was an entrepreneur before I was an entrepreneur. I, I was more of a street entrepreneur. He was and not not like drugs or anything. I'm just saying like <laughs> flipping cars, you know, right. clothes or yeah. whatever I can get my whatever hands hustle on. you can get into. Exactly. Yeah. He was he was a you know a, a, a real entrepreneur. You know, flipping cars and then he from wholesale to retail on dealership, etc. Uh, financing all that so uh, people you know one of his superpowers is people love him he's a, he's a he's a machine you know he's yeah. a machine his work ethic is unmatched um, he's a great integrator um, he's a marketing like I said marketing guru I don't think there's a better marketing machine out there this guy sets up sequences pain points you name it I already experienced it I was on your guys' Facebook page just to check it out and I'm getting retargeted on Facebook there you go. <laughs> so that, I was just doing research. So those are some of you know I, I can't I can't really think of all of them because if yeah. you ask other people they might have a different perception of what his superpower is. But right. um, I mean, thank would, you. I, would you would you I'm agree blushing. with some of those? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know me more than me. Yeah, it's crazy uh, because sure. that's a fact. Uh, he bought me a gift on. Uh, was it was it Christmas? No, 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 no. Before recently. That. No, the first one. I'm like, how did you even know I needed that? And you're like, dude, I know you more than you. Oh, <laughs> when you, uh, the watch set? No, the... Which one? The, I mean, I don't know if you should say this. He bought me a gun. Uh, oh, um, But yes. <laughs> he didn't know I had bought... It took me like a year to pick. I, I never had guns. and yeah. um, Just bought that. And I'm like, dude, I have the exact same one. How did you know, like, uh, if I was going to buy one? I bought you a 9 millimeter yeah, Glock. Um, Glock, right? Yeah. 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 But then, like, I have. It's an Arizona now. show, guys. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, then, yep. and I'm like, how did you even know? Because I have the exact, like, the identical. He's like, dude, I know you. Yeah. So, like, it took does. him a year to know it, to know what gun he would have wanted. Yeah. It took me, like, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> like, oh, this is the gun for Sal. Yeah. Brought the gun to, wait, not to the office, right? We brought it. <laughs> I met him somewhere. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, in a trunk. In a it's trunk. Yeah, Arizona, yeah, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, and then recently, uh, I would like to boast a little bit about what I got you for your oh, birthday. Oh, my God, yeah. So uh, he ah, Tell him the story about this. He comes into the office. So I, I was in San Diego, mm -hmm. and I come back, and my birthday has passed. So, yeah. And we're having our Monday meeting. So mind you, everybody in the office, like our office is packed, and people are waiting. We have our agenda. We're going to talk about the whiteboard, and like we're ready. And, and Carl just takes off. I don't know. Maybe I'm like, he's going to the restroom. And the guy's are like, hey, Carl is, is live. I'm like, why? <laughs> You're like, so, the restroom? And, 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 in the yeah. restroom? Why is he live? So I didn't even have, have time to pick up my phone. And Carlos comes in with a bag bigger than me. And yeah. he brings me this um, this laptop uh, bag. It's kind of like a, it's a Louis Vuitton, which is the guy spent some some. It's big, a beautiful bag. It's a yeah. beautiful bag. I'm like, how do you know I want this? And he's like, well, because I called the other one a rag. So, so <laughs> this is how the we went to a mastermind called Seven Figure Flippers uh -huh. um, over at Jason Boozy Spot, you know, okay, in uh, San Francisco. Yep. And I got my nice little Ferragamo carrier that looked, you know, my my fiance got that for my birthday, and I put it down on the table, and then I see his <laughs> like this piece of cloth down there, right? And I'm like, what the hell is this? And I, I kick it. I, kick, I literally, I'm, I just, he saw me he, kick he it. Definitely did. Definitely I kicked that. it, you know, because we mess around a lot with each other. We're, you know, we're like best friends, you know, but yeah. we're business partners too. Yeah. Right. I kicked this little piece of cloth. I, I don't know what the hell it was, man. I've never seen something so ugly. You know? <laughs> I've seen like laptop carriers, but that was like the ugliest one I've ever saw. It it's like gray. gray. It, was, yeah. it looks old, you know. And uh, and then I just, I, I knew right there and then what, what to get him for his birthday and and he was not expecting. He came back from San Diego. Now he has this beautiful, you know, with the strap, yeah, right? Absolutely. Now he's gonna be all proud and happy that, when he goes to awesome. places. That's awesome. Definitely not gonna be kicked around. That's that's for I, sure. I won't. I won't. <laughs> kick, I won't kick that back for sure. Um, I want to talk about his super. This guy. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody in business. When I first started in business, I wasn't as savvy, of course. You know, mm -hmm. he helped me become the business uh, businessman I am, and I feel like it's vice versa. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but at the beginning, you know, when you have a little bit of money or, like, you sell something, like, that's all you have. Mm -hmm. This guy was just at the beginning, like, he was such a driven guy. Like, he's such a... He was genuine. The first day I met him, he's like, I'll help you with the paperwork. Since I wasn't you're expecting anything yeah, from you. Yeah, nothing expected. Yeah. Like, je like, from the first conversation we had, he's like, I'll help you with the paperwork. All right. And at that point, I think he was being genuine, not just starting my business because that's how he is. I Now I know, like, being in business with him, he's like, you, anyone can relate to him. 
Yeah. You can be anyone and he'll relate to you because he, he's real. He's genuine about it. And uh, just that moment, I'm like, this guy is like really trying to help me. So how about we go by like within like a like within a week or so, I'm like, how about, cause he was flipping hats. He was doing like every, like I said, he's I a hustler. I made that hat by the way. Yeah. You can flip hats. That's, That's the all in. All in all hat, hat guys, all in entrepreneur yeah. brand. Oh, nice. So, yeah. um, and I'm like, how about, you know, let's go to the auction. Let's pick a car for you and let's, you know, let's have you flip it. And I don't want nothing back. Let's yeah. see how, you know. That to me meant so much. And it meant so much to me. We yeah. did a couple yeah. of them. I mean, the first one you made like twenty six hundred dollars. The first one I literally spent twenty five hundred bucks and I made twenty five hundred dollars on it. It was a two thousand seven Scion Ion uh, Saturn Ion. Saturn Ion. And I, 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 man, I flipped that thing on Facebook <laughs> probably within a few hours. You know yeah. what I mean? Then yeah. he did a few, and it was. I mean, this guy, I'm like, dude, you can sell anything, right? So I saw <laughs> when I said I can sell anything. You this guy had this old, this old, no, 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 this was worse. <laughs> this guy had a PT Cruiser with like black paint <laughs> on paint on paint. Like someone real, like someone was like, oh man, we messed up that paint job. Let's paint it again <laughs> over the paint. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, we messed it up again. <laughs> One more, see if it fixes itself. All right. And it was a smoker. Right, you would turn it, was, it on. It was you know. a trade-in that we got, and we didn't want to sell the dealership. We're like, I'm like, just put it on Craigslist, and you know, since you're like doing that, yeah. go ahead, have at it. Don't if you sell pay. that, you can sell anything. Yeah. yeah. If you so <laughs> I, I advertised on Craigslist because it was a smoker, like it, it threw a little smoke. I put smoking deal. Um, <laughs> You had a PT Cruiser 2006, so I, still I sold it. It was, it was, it was, it was a piece good. of crap. I can't believe it. we drove it. <laughs> Anyhow, so died. going back to to Carlos, like just genuine genuinity, um, being a good person. Like when he gets something, he always helped his friends around him. Yeah, and that's like the biggest thing. When you see you see these traits in a person, um, and business partner is tough, guys. To whoever has a business partner out there it's it's probably i'm not married but i've heard from married couple it's tough it's rough yeah. it's very tough There's a lot how many business partnerships do you see in real estate we, re we generally recommend avoiding a partnership if you can generally but you know what if you have yeah. like a, a, like if they complete each other i think that's the it is, yeah it's such yeah. an advantage well, our that's company cool. wouldn't where it's at without him and I no, believe it's, you, I believe it's sure. because we complete each other's like we do uh, different things. Yeah, we yeah. bring different things to the table. So just his communication skills. So I hear this guy on the phone talking on the phone and we I think we have some recordings. I wish we brought it here. Mm -hmm. And you talk to some you talk to a seller that's pissed off already about something and they end up selling you a house on the same same conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> and the true. same like within 20 minutes, like someone who's pissed off calling you pissed off, but end up you end up buying their house and yeah. then like and and ending up calling you you know in Spanish Nino or like something yeah, like my yeah, best sweetheart. like sweetheart yeah. or something and like <laughs> yeah. and then like oh you're a blessing from this you know and then when well this Alta happened, she went from I'm gonna sue you to get on the next plane to LA we want to meet you and yeah. then like my love my dear like you know as a son yeah. so you know just ge genuine right um, his work ethics was when I when we first started the real estate company. It was a hobby, like I said. It was a fix and flip, you know, and then we're gonna do, and then we found out about some checks coming in. Like, mm -hmm. who is this going to? It's like a wholesale. We're like, what, mm -hmm. you, what is a wholesale? So this guy start digging in about wholesaling. I'm talking about him and his job, and and he would be like in, in the back just learning about real estate. Yeah. Reaching out to people, which most of the time was unsuccessful because like he was mentioning, when, when a lot of these folks are pretty busy and you know they don't want to give time yeah, to the little sure. guy yeah so I mean this guy would work maybe what 20 hour days yeah so from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, I was working at the 9 to 5 but I already knew what I wanted to do with my life and so from 3 15 p.m. to 12 to 1 I was working I was but working then our for, conference for call call right. would be 1 o'clock too and night morning. 12 or one o'clock and we then we came talk. up with national cash yeah. up around two in the morning or something. yeah and then we would talk business for like a few hours then we go back to sleep so we can continue the next day we can plan the next day right right and that just that continued on so a lot of people don't understand like when it when people say like he's a hard worker or a hustler i mean this guy is a definition of a hustler right yeah. talk about having two jobs but one of them is pretty not a secure job it's pretty much just building something out of nowhere yep. yeah and that he just always had the vision he's like look we want to be big like we don't want to be just like the other investors that just i buy houses or anything we want to mm. build a brand yep. and 
national cash offer came, I think it was like four in the morning, way yeah. more than two o'clock. <laughs> and imagine, like, we're, we're like looking up names on the phone, like, and that some, was like thousands of names. names. Yeah. Turbo cash <laughs> offer, right? It's probably a, someone owns that. Oh, right? so sorry. Let's, someone yeah. owns Turbo <laughs> cash offer, right? I yeah. apologize. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just that, and then like the work ethics. But ever since, the guy is so loyal. Um, because at the beginning, I was so busy with my real estate, um, wow. with my car dealership. I owned two, yeah, yeah, yeah. transitioning from, I owned two car dealerships at that point. And um, I had to let, unfortunately, I had to let, let one of them go to, so I can focus on real estate. Mm -hmm. And that was a sacrifice doing business. You sacrifice one thing for something greater. Absolutely. So I own one right now instead of two. Um, but at the beginning, he was definitely holding it down more than I have because I was, and he understood that I was so busy doing yeah. what I have to do. Um, and, and just that, like, in a lot of business partnership, people don't understand that. They're like, oh, well, I, I put an extra more hour than you. Or someone says, uh, I put an extra dollar more than you. Yeah. But with I us, never got was, frustrated. Yeah. yeah, we were, you yeah. know, w with us, it was always genuine. Like, True no one, partnership. We don't, yeah, we don't, like, we don't even count who no. has more in the I mean, business. I came in today at like 11 and then went straight to get a massage. And, uh, <laughs> he's been stressed out the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I was there super early. He's, yeah, like, he's, he's been running uh, around because he, again, his part of the business is, you know, systems and you know what I mean? And right. he, he has a lot on his plate. I mean, we have probably, what, 12 missed calls so yeah, far? Yeah, so, so he has a lot on his plate. <laughs> I just want to remind everyone right now, like, uh, you know, if you're on, you're paying attention. We got 52 viewers. I appreciate everyone that's on. If you guys have questions, you know, don't be afraid to ask him right now. We'll get them answered, but also, like Carlos said, you know, like these, you guys want to give back. So, you For know, sure. you can reach out to these guys on Instagram oh, absolutely. or whatever. For sure. Um, so next question I got is, uh, so Colton, Colton Harris wants to know, how do you guys present your offers? Because obviously you're not offering retail. So like, how do you present the offer where it makes sense for the seller to accept it? That's definitely his, I, he, I, he deals with the acquisition yeah. side. So mm -hmm. the buying side and I deal with the selling and the integration side. Yeah. So it's definitely So his. I always tell my team, that the approach is everything. The way you approach a, a seller, potential seller, is you know you have to, first and foremost, you have to build so much rapport that no matter what offer you bring to the table, they're not gonna tell you to F off and just click on you, right? Yeah. If you build rapport, because you know people do business with people they like. So the approach is everything. You know, it's, it's great to deal, I mean, n more often than not, depending on what your marketing stream is, mm -hmm. you're going to deal with a realistic, rational seller, someone who knows like, look, I know I got to some, do some fixing and I know that I can do this. So th those are the easy ones, you know, to right. make to make a, a fair a fair cash offer. But the unrealistic ones, um, you just have to let them know like, hey, you know, this does have to be a win-win. Like I am here to provide a service for you. You are the number one priority. And, you know, but this, this does have to make sense for both sides in order right. for this to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's very, very important. But again, it starts with the rapport. You have to build rapport. These people have to become your friends. You have to connect with these folks in order to try to make something happen. Can you tell me how you connect, how you build rapport? Very how simple. you do it? Service yeah. first. Um, so like you said, you have to be a genuine person. Mm -hmm. if, if you're in this to, to get rich, um, you know, I, I don't know how successful you're going to be, but if you're in this to provide a service, um, I think that you're going to be more successful. You know, uh, the odds are you will be more successful. I'm going to pull um, something out right now. Show you. Go ahead. You, okay. okay. So um, I'll give you the perfect example. Um, we just had this Tucson seller, and one of my acquisition guy was talking to him, and um, he wasn't having a lot of luck. We were at between seventy to eighty thousand dollars as far as the offer. The offer, right? Mm -hmm. He was at ninety eight. So then I start talking to him. I actually have the recording because somebody actually, um, somebody actually recorded one of my acquisition guys was. Oh man, this is gonna be gold. Let me hit, let me hit the play button. Right, he recorded the phone call. He sent it to me yesterday, and uh, I start talking to him. His name is Steve. I remember the guy's name. Yeah. I remember it's Steve. He lives out of state. His uh, daughter, um, who he loves very much, lives at the property, and she goes to U of A, and she's thinking about you know she has first dips on the property. So you see how I start to collect all that data and information. Mm -hmm. And I said, Steve, oh, you know, hey, look, I know that's your princess. I have a daughter of my own. I, you know, those, those, are, those are our pride and joy. I know that she's going to have. But if she decides to move out of the state, 
you know, allow me to give this a shot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I say, hey, look, Steve, I know that you're at 98,000 and I'm at 80,000. I already told you what I can do for you, Steve. I'm, I'm going to give you a, a cash, you know, in, in cash as is a day of your choice. Make this the most simplest transaction you've ever had in your life. You know, can you how close can you get to my number? 80,000 at that point he said, you know what? Why don't we meet in the middle? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know, I think that's a timer. I don't know what that timer is for. Are we about to oh, don't worry about We're good? It. Don't worry okay. About it. And then he says, all right, Carlos, I am going to go to Los Angeles. Um, this was this Saturday, by the way. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll be back Friday. I said, okay, Steve. So can I follow up with you on Saturday? Is that okay? He's like, yeah, of course. That's fine. Let's do it. By the way, I already got this guy halfway down, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, Steve, you're going to be in LA. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what are you going to LA for? For business, okay. For business, if you don't mind me asking, who are you going with, right? Oh, my sister-in-law. We're we're handling a business uh, arrangement down there. Okay, you know what, Steve? Uh, mark my words. As soon as I get off this phone call, uh, Jonathan, my acquisition guy, is going to send you a text message with the name and address of this place. I need you to go check out. It's called Spire Seventy Three. It is seventy three stories high. It's a it's a rooftop lounge. They got delicious uh, food. They got amazing cocktails. You get to oversee the entire city of Los Angeles. You have to promise me you're gonna go. You know what I mean? You see yeah. how? Yeah. He's like, oh wow, yeah man, I'm yeah I'm definitely gonna go. Shoot me the address, and boom, I had John shoot him the address, and uh, he said, thank you. I'm definitely gonna check it out. And I'm like, you gotta promise me that you're gonna go to this place. This place is breathtaking. I couldn't believe it when I went. You know, I, I went. I was in LA three weeks ago, um, buying another property. So you need to go to this place, Steve. So you see how we're we're friends now. Yeah, for we're, sure. We're, you know, we connected. So and I mean, if that doesn't let you know how I connect with people, I'll know for sure. That I don't know a, what that does, right? And, I, and this is what I was gonna show everybody. If you want to show it to them, so ever since we incorporated this into our company, core values, um, our core values definitely mm-hmm. changed our mm-hmm. our company's uh, direction. So yeah. if you want to show it to people, so selfless service, integrity, work ethic, commitment, and teamwork. Right. Um, everybody that we, here, if you want to show that, um, back it up, all right. There you go. So th- those are actually displayed into in the office. And ever since we did that, we, God has been blessing us because see that he was actually providing a service before we even buy the property or he doesn't even know if we're going to buy it or not because the yeah. daughter might move out Steve's or not. property yeah. yeah but he just provided like that's providing a service and being genuine right we yeah we don't know what but i know one thing is that if he does decide to sell that property guess who he's selling it to it's going to you for sure so keon gray wants to know what was your first form of marketing what was your first thing you did bandit signs yeah <laughs> Easy enough. And then uh, handwritten, uh, handwritten, uh, handwritten bandit signs. Um, I went to this place um, and they give you a great deal for like 75 cents. They give you a blank, small little bandit sign and, uh, you know, just grab a, a marker and, and go crazy. The transition of the bandit sign was black, all black, like, you know, a marker, then some colors to it. Well, you can uh, tell when we got a little money, <laughs> right? Cause, <laughs> cause we, we're we, had a, ones. we had a red brick house with the chimney. You know what I mean? Printed. <laughs> so I went from like no, sloppy. No, I'm talking about the 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 sharpie, the colored sharpie. That's what I mean. I went from sloppy, you know. To oh, it was it was black sharpies, then colored sharpies, then the printed the red, ones. The yeah. Printed, yeah, you can tell that you know. Okay, they're starting to get a little little more marketing yeah. money, you know. So, yeah. uh, Ujman Khalid wants to know where you. What's the best list for cold calling? Oh, and then a, and then a follow up to that is how to skip trace them. We actually, I'll give you guys um, a, a nice little nugget here, guys. We actually provide a skip tracing. We are we have a skip tracing company. We mm-hmm. run all our records through our skip tracing company. Yeah. There's a lot of big investors that I won't mention around the country that actually use our skip tracing company because our data is better than Teal. We brought in a, a data scientist. So we hired right? a data scientist. So this is what we, 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 we do about a million some records a month. Mm-hmm. And that's across the United States for, for a lot of people including our company. So if you guys have any questions, uh, just send us an email to need to skip at gmail.com. So So just need to skip at gmail.com. But you want to give them, I'll I'll give, why don't you give them a nice little list? You're the guy that does it all. I was going to go to the list. Yeah. Yeah. So the list that's, it's not a, it's not a one answer question. So, um, cold calling is obviously is, is the new thing now. Mm -hmm. So it's before it was mail. Everybody's been cold calling calling before everybody even before everybody 
started cold before everybody started advertising cold call we've absolutely been at, yeah, yeah we've been cold calling for a few years and everybody's just on the cold call wave now you know what yeah I mean? yeah cold calling is amazing by the way yeah. so good on you if you're doing cold calling right now but um the type of list it all depends on what market you're in of course mm -hmm. uh, as far as us we we hit every single list cold calling we have 13 cold callers and ours is a little bit more granular than most so we separate our, our list into different um, uh, tiers. So there's three mm -hmm. different tiers that we separate ours into, cold, warm, and hot. And we appoint our our best callers to the hot and our second best callers to the warm and our our okay callers to the to cold the, to the yeah. cold tier. Uh, high, high equity. So yeah. high equity would be a mm -hmm. cold tier. Uh, a hot tier, I would say pre-foreclosure, tax default. Uh, a medium, uh, a warm tier, I would call, uh, we, we use the, uh, code violations. That's that would but be but let me give here. let me give them a nugget, right? Depending, yeah. um, if you don't have a lot of money to just grab a bunch of lists like we do, I mean, we spend tens of thousands of dollars every month on these, not only on the list, but on the skip on skip tracing the list. You know, even though mm -hmm. we have our own skip tracing company, it still does cost us a lot of money, right? Right. What I would do is I would one of the best lists that you can possibly get is driving for dollars. Absolutely. Yeah. And that doesn't take any money, just a little gas money, right? Mm -hmm. Driving for dollars. Even Google. You can some some people I know some people and that I, actually use Google View. They literally drive Google like you know the the, <laughs> the Google That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah, they, for they distressed have, properties. They have a VA stuff, yeah. or they do it themselves and the VA is three dollars an hour and they just make create a spreadsheet. And the only reason I know this is because they send us those lists to skip trace for them. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you get this list? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, we uh, we we Google Drive it. So it's crazy. Google Drive <laughs> it. That's phenomenal. So, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll give this guy who's watching yeah. your show a little value. Mm -hmm. uh, go get 100 properties, distressed properties, drive for them. Uh, tell him that, uh, or tell us that you were watching the show and we'll skip trace it for free. Oh, that's huge, huge. Did you, so make sure he knows that. Yeah. So yeah, send a list and uh, and and Carlos and Sal will skip trace that for you for free. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then let's see what else was there. That one send it to Carlos and National Cash Offer so our VA doesn't get confused. Yeah, yeah. Carlos and National Cash Offer dot <laughs> com. One, yeah. uh, all right. So David Olds wants to know uh, how many markets are you guys in right now? I can name them. Go ahead. All right. So California. Um, we Cities. Are, okay. So um, uh, Riverside area, Inland Empire area in California. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously, Phoenix and San all the metro, in San Bernardino in California. Yep. Um, Phoenix, all metro areas, and then you have uh, Nevada, Henderson, um, soon Reno, um, and then you have uh, San Antonio, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin. Yeah. And uh, soon Tulsa and Columbus, God willing. So why not Houston? Houston? We're skipping Houston right now. There's a lot. There's a lot going on in there. I hear, I'm hearing there's a lot crazy going on. action so going on in see, Houston right so now. So this is the thing about us. We like to be. Uh, contrarians. Yeah. Wherever everybody's going, we like to go the opposite direction. Yeah. If like I'll give you an example. We've been cold calling for a while. Everybody's trying to cold call now. Now we're figuring out other ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's uh, and we'll talk about the superpowers later. Yeah, of course. Uh okay, so Max, what's up Max? Max wants to know, are you guys door knocking and what's your success rate when you're door knocking? We don't door knock. We don't do no. bandit signs nor door knocking, which we should be door knocking. But we do have people that do driving for dollars for us, uh -huh. and they submit it through our system. Affiliates. And those are called affiliates. So mm -hmm. what we do is we skip trace for them for free, and we can process the, the lead through our system, and, or they can do it, and then we can sell for them, and uh, we just make it easy. So you're making it easy to, 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 to bird dog for you, too. Oh, absolutely. Super All they easy. do is just drive around and submit we the address. Have, we don't like to call our folks bird dogs. We like to call them affiliates. Okay. I uh, and I'll give a small little shout out. Uh, Sam and Gus, the, uh, two affiliates. These guys have already made at least twelve thousand dollars a piece off two yeah. properties. And that's a like piece. With, that's within like two months. Yeah. A piece. I don't cool. know. If, yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, affiliates. If you're looking to be an affiliate, guys, let us know. We would love to help you out. Um, our affiliates. You know, we we like to JV with them. We will help them, um, support them in every which way possible. So. Okay, and then Brian Sammons wants to know how large a list do you recommend monthly per cold caller per month? Oh, this is your question. Per cold call. So our cold callers dial anywhere between six hundred and eight hundred fifty dollars a day, mm -hmm. depending on what dialer you use and how is fat. that on a triple line or single line? Yeah, it depends on a single line or a triple line, how many hours. But the average yeah. is that. So that's the industry average. Uh, depends what kind of data you get. 
So for our data, we get up to 10 phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So it depends who you use to skip trace. Sometimes they give you three numbers only. So that's where, where it kind of, yeah. and you know, we can get into details. It takes us all day to get into that. But yeah. um, for one call call, imagine if you have, if you have a list of a thousand people and you, you skip trace it and you got average four numbers. So that's 4,000 numbers. Uh, that you're dialing and of course you know you'll have some of them they'll talk to for half an hour or 20 minutes and then the rest is probably they don't, they don't answer and it right. goes goes back into the queue so i think uh if you do a list of three thousand to four thousand i think that should be that, should that would only yeah. occupy them for like a month though. well yeah that, that's oh, yeah, for a question month. oh okay yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah okay so cassie carolis wants to know how do you become an affiliate just reach out to us. Um, reach out to us, um, Carlos at nationalcashoffer.com, Sal at nationalcashoffer.com, and uh, provide your phone number. I'll give you a phone call, and you know I'll, I'll set you on your way. Instructions. Awesome. Start getting some deals. And then, where do you guys get your list? Where do we get our list? So, from? which list? There's there's a lot of list. lists. So, um, where well, there's list source, of course, everybody knows about list source. Radar, there's property radar. There is Rebo Adam. Gateway. Adam data. There is Rebo, Rebo Gateway. Gateway. Uh, there are successors data. There's so many different. Uh, so it depends resources. what type of list that you're are trying you to pull. Are you guys going through all of them? We're going. So for we each one, we goals. use we use for a specific. So I'll give you That's an cool. example. Uh, I'll give you an example. Where's the best tax default? Tax default, we get it from Rebo Gateway. Rebo Gateway. See, okay. so each 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 resource or data mm -hmm. provider has its own like niche. Yeah. If you want right. inheritance, you'll go to successors data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and probate from there as well. If you want equity, of course, success, uh, list source has a property bunch of equity. Right. Property, property radar, radar yeah. too. Property mm -hmm. radar, uh, we used to use it more before, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, limit to. But I mean, we downloaded four hundred and eighty thousand records last month, so uh, it's amazing. We couldn't it's do busy. property yeah. radar, yeah. Uh, but we downloaded from multiple sources. Um, tax default, Rebo Gateway. Okay, and then do you guys? Um, Prioritize your dialers based off the list. For example, three dials at a time for high oak equity, and then one for foreclosure. Do you guys have? No, that? they're all they're all triple dialers. All triple, okay, yeah. um, because just because time is is important in real estate, right. time is everything. So, uh, but we do spec we do put the right people into the right list to call okay. because you don't you don't want. You don't want people to call the pre foreclosure list and someone who's who's new. Yeah, especially these people are more distressed. Sure. And you don't want to. People don't don't realize that building rapport, uh, that it starts with a call call, not when people are trying to reach out to you and you buy their house. Yeah. A lot of people talk about build rapport, build rapport, but they forget that building rapport starts with a call call. When a lot of them are call calling now, mm -hmm. we used to have a call center in the Philippines, and we actually shut that down. Mm -hmm. um, and we use now we have Nicaraguans calling for us, uh, but starting next month. We're gonna have uh, our own call center. We started, yeah. Uh, yeah we yeah. started a call center. It's called the Call Geeks. The Call Geeks. So we're and gonna be able nice. to provide that service um, for everybody across the nation. So the beautiful soon. thing about this is, uh, we we because we've been call calling for so long, we understand, we understand what's wrong with the call calling industry right now. Yeah. People people hire someone from India, and there's 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 a there is a barrier in between the culture. cultural cultural, cultural barrier. barrier. Like yeah. uh, somewhere in the Philippines, they they don't know what the roof is made of. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They hear. A, football game, a basketball game in the background, they, they can't relate to that. So our call callers are going to be um, uh, bilingual, English and Spanish. Level five. Right. English and English. it's going to be level five, which is pretty much like how we're speaking right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the key for call calling. You don't want to, a lot of people go for the $3 dialer uh, person mm -hmm. to dial or $4 or $5. But they're missing out. It ends. It ends up being more expensive. It, it does right. because it's missed opportunity. The data. Absolutely. The data that, that, that they're skip sense. tracing is expensive. The data they're downloading is super expensive, and they're put. They're giving it to someone that doesn't know how to handle it. So yeah, it might be cheap to uh, to see on that end. Mm -hmm. But remember how much money you spent at the beginning. And guess what? The missed opportunity. Not just the money that you burnt and threw away. What about the that deals money? You're missing. Yeah, the hundred thousand dollar deal, or the two hundred thousand dollar deal that you could have got from that perfect caller. Oh, that so, makes a lot of sense. So always train your callers. I would say once once a week, have a meeting with your call callers if they're out of out of the country, which is fine. Uh, but as you progress, you might want to hire people that speak better English, that relate sure. to the culture better. Right. Um, and then uh, my boy Matt Potter, the short sale expert, you mm -hmm. you recognize yeah. him. So he wants to know what is your best uh, marketing, uh, most effective lead source. So um, digital uh, PPC, right? That's what it's been for the past couple of years. Yeah, we, it's definitely been that. But it's uh, been cold calling lately. 
Lately has been cold calling because we shifted everything like we, we said. Have, so we have, just to give you a small example. So uh, for Matt Potter, yeah. um, so out of the 34 active deals that we have in the pipeline right now, mm -hmm. um, 12 of them were from cold calling. So, okay. yeah. So cold right calling, now it's cold calling, but it, it, one. it used to always be digital, which is uh, pay-per-click SEO. All right, so online, pay per click and online then presence and, and, and social media and social They're media. All, all right, so I've done a lot of pay per click, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's mm -hmm. that was like one of my best lead sources, and I can tell you personally, you know, in the last uh, six to twelve months, OfferPad's been eating my lunch. You know, they're like the bully <laughs> pushing me around at I school. I see that. I so see, actually, tell I me see your guys' experience with that. I see that happening. Um, well, okay, so this is the thing uh, about competitors, right? I don't know if, if I'm allowed to say this, but a lot of competitors, I won't mention specific names, mm -hmm. but a lot of these big competitors, um, they have what's called a gross offer. Mm -hmm. um, they come in with, uh, let's just say your property is worth 200K and they're like, you know what? Yeah, we'll give you 190,000, right? Mm -hmm. By the time by the time they send an inspector and, and, and they take out their, their, um, their risk uh, fee and commission fee and, and doc fee, or whatever, then their net offer becomes less than what our initial net offer was. Right. But by that time, these people are on the closing table. Yeah. So it's a little late to back out. And, and in my opinion, it's very unethical. Right. No, very I feel unethical. the same exact way. Yeah. So how do you how do you convey that message? Because we explain it to them mm -hmm. like, hey, they're going to beat you up after the inspection. Mm -hmm. You're going to get less than what we would offer you. Mm -hmm. You so know. again, that's building rapport. If someone yeah. trusts, if someone's going to trust you after mm -hmm. they talk to you on the phone and they yeah. understand, they're, people are going to do business with you if they like you, like right. you said. Um, but f from a marketing standpoint, you always have to be innovative. Yeah. So just they didn't they didn't become big overnight, right? They did their, no. their market research. They did they they understood their competitors and they they jumped into the market, just like that. We do the same thing. We we have uh, our digital department consists of six people. So. Uh, it's not just us in the, in right. the marketing for just for the online department. So we have six people that constantly work on our online okay. um, and we understand our competition. All right. So let's see what else was there. Um, knowing what you know today, what would you guys do differently when you guys started? You know what? Um, it's hard. You know, it, it, it's hard to say. Let me tell you why. We feel like you have to go through the growing pains. Mm -hmm. Like I actually miss, I miss the excitement yeah. of, of like getting a big check or, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Now our excitement now, like it's not the money, it's the mm -hmm. growth, right? Yeah. So as we're growing now we're excited. Okay. Yeah. We, we're starting a call center. We're doing this, we're doing that. We're expanding markets. You know, we, we're kicking butt in San Antonio, et cetera. So that is what makes us excited now. But back then, uh, I do feel like you should go through the growing pains. That's, and we always say this. I mean, there's something that I always said that hardship all refines people. Um, just going through the hardship, it just, it's like diamond. You mold, it takes some time and pressure and, and it, it becomes something beautiful. And mm -hmm. I think that if, if we were, you know, uh, food spent, uh, there you, you can use that. You wanna use this one? Yeah, I think you oh, no, 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 no. Okay, but, so you know, if we had a silver spoon in, yeah. in our mouth, then I don't think we would have became um, the company that we are today because we wouldn't appreciate the small things that we got. Right. At one point, we said if we get every, we get one deal, every deal we're gonna get, every wholesale deal we're gonna get, we're gonna travel, right? Right. I, I mean, that. if we did that, this we month, would never be in the business. We would not because there's more now. We have more deals than in the month. Yeah. So, are you good on the charger? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There you go. All right, there you go. So, but I will give this advice. Um, surround yourself with the right people. I think one of the biggest life hacks um, is surrounding yourself with the right people. And education. Yeah. So if you surround- And that's powerful. That's yeah. extremely powerful. It, it really, Tony Robbins says it, Jim Rohn really? says it, mm -hmm. yeah. I wish I actually, remember I tell you, like, I don't like, <laughs> I ne I've never watched uh, like Grant Cardone. You know, yeah. I, I just, I read a lot. Right. And um, I actually learned that from a book um, called Flip by mm -hmm. Nick Reese. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest life hacks is surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, and I strongly do agree. Even if you're an up and coming guy, if someone sees hustle in you, if someone sees, you know, you are an ethical person, um, you're, you're, you're going to save yourself a lot of hardship. You're going to see a lot of hardship and they're going to pour themselves in you just like for you sure. do. Absolutely. For Carlos. Yeah. All right. So let's see what else was there. Okay. So, uh, Jordan Caps wants to know how many employees does national cash offer have? 26, 26. All right. So that 26, 
How are you paying a commission? You pay hourly? What's the what's the setup? It's 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 different per employee, but um, for most people, probably want to want to know about the acquisition. We have mm-hmm. five acquisitions right now. Okay. Um, acquisition managers gets paid um, a draw, okay. which is if you don't know if to some of you who don't know what a draw is, car, uh, it's from, from a car, car dealership. I yeah. yeah. said that. So <laughs> some people people get paid get paid on commissions, and let's say. Um, they don't sell that week, so they get their draw, mm-hmm. or that month, they get their draw, and then next month, whatever they sell, it gets cut out of their draw. Right. So we do a base, which is a draw, and then we do percentages uh, for our acquisitions. For our, uh, we have a disposition manager. He's mm-hmm. um, both on base pay, uh, not a draw, and uh, and percentage of every deal that goes through, the, through our- uh, per- Percentage company. of the spread. Okay, no. and then you guys, so you guys got acquisitions, you got dispositions, and then transaction coordinator, uh, marketing lead managers, manager. marketing. We got a, um, we have a uh, digital department. Mm-hmm. Um, we have cold callers. We have a quality control manager for the cold calling. Um, oh, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Very she's a cold caller herself. She she's a phenomenal cold caller. She's the only United States cold caller that we have. Mm-hmm. But she do, every day at night she listens to the calls for that same day and the next day she gives the report. She gives them if they made any mistakes, if they said something or they hung up on the wrong person. So all that is quality control and squash it immediately. So before we used to nice. miss out a lot of opportunity just because of that, because especially if you guys call call and you don't know, like a lot of people are out of the country, someone will actually be on the line for an hour or two acting like they're on a call. Done. They're just they're, they're just hanging calling. out with the person next to them and talking and they're just I'm telling you, we're gonna change the entire like wow. cold calling so, industry uh, once we launch. So be our, careful from uh, that. that you you may think that someone is calling, but they're yeah. just hanging out, going to the restroom. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so oh, be yeah, careful. We've from ran that. into all that. Man. Yeah. All right. So let's see what else was there. We got. You guys got any free sources that you guys like? Free sources. Free for leads or for marketing. For leads. Um, I would say free sources come from MLS. If you yeah. if if you know your way around the MLS, a mm-hmm. lot of people get leads from there but yeah um just can conven- for conveniency we don't get it from there because mm-hmm. you know you want to suppress data that you got um, previously you know a golden one is um zillow for sale by owner yeah um yeah. there's a guy that we know um before he goes to bed every night he just shoots the for sale by owner guys a text message hey would you take this you know that's not a bad it's not a bad yeah. i mean our acquisition know, it, manager one day he it was uh, it was just, our systems were down yeah uh, i don't know if you guys know podio was down for for a while if it you, was down and, yesterday and yesterday and today too by the way um and he wasn't he wasn't doing much so he, what did he do he went on zillow for sale by owner and and, he caught one. and then he caught a deal that it, the spread was 50k but the lady was kind of a, a headache but mm-hmm. we ended up oh, making twenty four thousand dollars at right. the end of the day still a, a, a free lead because he was just Maybe board or maybe no for sale by owner. That's huge. for sale by owner. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you said that you get one in the U.S. and then everyone else is in out, of, out of the country. Out, out of the country. country. But if we do the out of the country, they have to be level five English speakers, which is okay. Like, How do you guys rate that? Is that like a test they take? Uh, we actually do have. Uh, we have a, a particular script mm-hmm. and it uses uh, certain tones, and so you can, you know, distinguish what kind of level. That's awesome. Yeah. You uh, want you want to hear some? Some no I no have, no. I no. have some examples. <laughs> I have some audio. I think we'll we'll post the links to that later on. Okay. Let's see. All right. So we're gonna talk about the cities you guys are in. All right. What's the greatest lesson you guys have learned? And that could be in this business, outside this business, but just a lesson Don't, that you want to pass on. What, what do not say? do not burn people. Always always do the right thing in business because what goes around comes. I mean, it's a small, especially in real estate, it's such a small yeah. community. Yeah. Um, don't chase that one deal that makes you rich. Do the right thing mm-hmm. and and do good by the seller because at the end of the day, we're we're in the service business. We're in the solutions business. So the, the real estate, and he says that all the time too, the real estate is just a product. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if we're, if you're, if, you know, you're selling phones or cars, the car is just a product. We're in the people's business, yeah. right. so if you're if you're a bad person with one person and the other, you can't balance the two. So always be be ethical. That's powerful. What about you? Um, I would say try to gain as much knowledge as you can. Um, I think that that could prevent a lot of headaches mm-hmm. and a lot of money thrown away. Because now look at our marketing. You know oh, I mean? absolutely. Twenty sixteen, so, we went to a hot seat event. 
and Roughly we were we were already making like six figures yeah. and but you know at that point you don't think that you, that there's something else well, that you Keon, know it all. Keon Greer saw me on the show and we already uh, sent me an email. So, Keon hey, Greer. way to take action, Keon. That's yeah, awesome. That's what, we love so, action takers. <laughs> yeah. We'll so, ahead. and then we, we didn't think that there, we're going to learn anything new, but someone pushed us, mm -hmm. a friend, uh, Jalen, and he's like, come on, guys, let's go. All right. And, and then we went. And guess what? We were heading to a direction and then that took us to a whole new direction. It changed the whole, trajectory. our business. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So learning, like, don't don't think that you know it all. If you're the smartest person in that room, leave. All right. That's for sure. that's definitely a true mm -hmm. statement. Yeah, statement. So Toby Rosario wants to know how much you guys spend a month of marketing. I want to qualify that question too. So how much you guys spend a month overhead total, and how much you guys spend a month of marketing? Um, some yeah, months, average. some months we have. Uh, our average is about seventy thousand dollars a month, but it, it varies between seventy and a hundred, mm -hmm. depending on on of course how much commissions we pay. Mm -hmm. um, Recently, we increased our budget, so we're in the like close to the sixty for our marketing. Um, a couple of months back, marketing was fifty. Okay, and you guys have any realtors on your team? That's from Noel Challenger. We do. We actually have. Um, they're not so. Um, we actually created uh, with NextGen, uh, mm -hmm. our good friend Omar Robles. Mm -hmm. We actually have our own brokerage. Um, yeah. with him now we're not realtors we're just partners for yeah brokers. we're just mm -hmm. you get it we're owners we're brokerage right. owners and mm -hmm. then we have some realtors that we're actually starting to interview yeah um so we can monetize on all the retail leads that we have which is over three thousand right now right yeah smart move smart move uh all right so what are you guys learning right now uh well you know what um taxation maybe or money management mm, ta taxes we just paid our taxes and uh it, it was a lot <laughs> it's a privilege <laughs> it, it, it is a privilege um i remember when i used to have a job and i used to be excited about getting a return you know Which, yeah. <laughs> and you know what i mean like oh man i can't wait you know like i was i probably had already spent that money before i even got it you know yeah. what I mean? right uh, but um, we are learning. We're we're learning a lot. We're learning about um, uh, SEP IRAs. We're you know we're uh, I would say money or wealth management and wealth retention. Yeah, you okay. have everybody has a partner. IRS right. is your partner, whether you like it or you don't. I don't mind paying the IRS, <laughs> yeah. man. As much money as, as I mean, God, we're able to thank God live you know yeah. abundantly. You know, thank thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll pay taxes if I can if I can continue to live the way I live and my family and my friends. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I don't mind paying my toll. All right, so Templeton Walker, one of my boys, the first guest. So uh, he wants to know, what do you guys do with your retail deals where you know there's just not enough meat in the bone, but the that, seller's super motivated? Well, we, we monetize. That's why we started a brokerage. Mm -hmm. We started a brokerage in order for us to uh, attempt to list that property. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Uh, Jamil, what's up, Jamil? Uh, he wants to know IPA or loggers? IPA or uh, I uh, IPA. IPA? Yeah. <laughs> IPA. All, All right. right. Uh, and then Joe Johnson wants to know, what's your some of your favorite books right now? Okay. So uh, this is I uh, flip by Nick Reese. If you're if you're if you're just a beginner, mm -hmm. I always tell people read Flip by Nick Reese. He's a really good friend of ours. It's crazy because I you know he was a mentor. He was definitely a mentor, and he had a lot of impact on on our business. And now you know we share some stuff with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. He's a really good guy, genuine guy, real player, active guy. You got a lot of these gurus guy out there. Guy beats the concrete himself. Yeah, he beats the it. concrete. Probably flips about you know 20, 30 properties a month. There's a lot of gurus out there that actually don't have any active deals. Yeah. I say that all the time on my live streams because <laughs> I despise those people that are just trying to sell education with 10 year old content. Right. You know what I mean? No, that would not guys. work it, today. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's the theory it guys, does. not the, not the, not they, the ones. These, these well, guys, they did. They did make money in those methods back in the day, but right. that won't work now. They sell it today. And so imagine nothing. how many people are failing because these gurus are giving them the wrong content. You right. know what I mean? And they're taking their money. Absolutely. Well, they're definitely oh. take, they're ta taking that's tens that's the of th they're taking thousands or tens of thousands. Well, the average guru makes $10 million a year, so just do the math. Yeah. How and you know what? They, they feed off that fresh, up and coming wholesale blood. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And we think that's really wrong. So, Flip by Nick Reese. Um, and also, guys, I don't know if you noticed this, Steve. I've been dropping a lot of content lately on my live feeds, yep. you know, how to leverage other people's money, all this stuff. And it's free. You know, you don't right. have to pay me for it, right? Um, so, you know, uh, all in underscore entrepreneur on Instagram. Right. Um, I like to, I really love to add value. Um, that's why I ask questions. I'll say, hey guys, what do you guys want to learn about tomorrow? We'll talk about it, right? Um, the other book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, 
That's actually a must read. We actually have made our entire team read that book. T. Harvecker. Secrets of the Mill and Mind by T. Yeah. Harvecker. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amazing. That Welcome is a book. life changing mindset changing book. And then if you're more advanced into yeah, that book is if you're if you are advanced, definitely do uh, traction. 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 Traction, yeah. traction is amazing. Yeah. We changed our whole business based off traction exactly. last October. Everything changed. Exactly, it's yeah. Amazing. Based our off core traction. values are based off traction. Exactly. So. That's awesome. There's a new book that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Scaling uh, Up. Uh, oh, Scaling Up. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you, Nick Reese or Reese? How do you spell his last name? Nick, uh, N I C K Reese R U I Z. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to make sure because uh, someone else said like Nick Reese, and I was looking it up. It's like. These are Nick Ruiz. Is that what you guys Nick Reese. Alpha, <laughs> Alpha, <laughs> Home, Alpha Home Flipping. Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, he doesn't cool. pay us to like drop his name. We just have a lot of love for the guy. So We'll work on it. I'll try to. I'll, so, I'll be your manager. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So let's see what else is there. Um, uh, why do you think most people fail? That, can I answer that? Absolutely. Lack of commitment. It's that simple. Yeah. A lot of people are motivated. You know, they go to a flip to freedom event or they go to some seminar mm -hmm. and they're out there. They put their first hundred bandit signs. They don't get a phone call. It's over. They're done. Or yeah. they're or they're wise wrong. So if someone's trying to do it just to get the some, money. Yeah. Just to do it for the money or to get a nice car and, and which is nice. That's just the perks of owning. Being successful. Yeah, being successful yeah. But you really have a purpose. It, it's, very, purpose, it's very yeah. simple. Yeah. So just like you said, you know, you got to have a strong why because that strong why is going to keep you going through the, fa the the failing times, trialing, you know, trialing time, right? Yeah. Um, and if you chase success and chase growth, what do you think comes with that? Yeah, it's just gonna come. Your, your, your little Lamborghini that are, I, I don't fit in a Lamborghini, so I don't, I'll never buy a Lamborghini. Yeah. Um, so yeah, your, your Lamborghini comes, your nice estate comes, you know what I mean? So the money does come if you chase success and growth. Um, so, I think that's a very great point. So let's elaborate on that. What is your why? My family. Um, I want to change the entire, uh, I would say, trajectory of my my family. You know, I'm the mm -hmm. first guy in my family, you know, to do it. And then like, so, you know, Donald Trump already had Fred Trump, right? But Donald yeah. Trump exploded, you know, Fred Trump was only worth about, you know, 10, 10 million, which is a lot, right? But mm -hmm. Donald Trump is worth billions. You get it, right? But it started somewhere, right? See so money. It's, yeah. it's start. It's it start. I'm 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 new money. Mm -hmm. I'm a new mindset for my God willing generations to come. You I'm, be I'm the guy that's going to change it. You to be Fred Trump. I'll be Fred Trump. <laughs> that's awesome. Fred uh, or I'll be Francisco <laughs> Trump because I'm yeah. Hispanic. So. <laughs> What about yourself? Well, mine is mine is the same as family, just because my background. Yeah. We come from, you know, I come from the Middle East. We mm -hmm. ran away from, you know, prosecution, and uh, I, I've seen my ma my family struggle, definitely heavily struggle through almost being kidnapped. My dad's been shot, um, you know, just been through a lot. We came here. Uh, we thought, you know, we made it, you know, safely made it. Now, right. uh, we, we made some money. From back home coming here um, but we lost it all pretty much and my dad lost like 74 pounds in like two months so yeah. at that point I decided and I was I was a guy that went to school so I was I always wanted to finish and become like a, a doctor or mm -hmm. an engineer or something but at that point um, that was the moment I said no matter what happened I'll make sure my family's okay and everything I do is for my family so I didn't I didn't go to college I just hit hit work you came here as an immigrant? I did. So yeah. did I. Yeah. I was born in Mexico. I um, I didn't become a, a citizen until 2012. So there's no excuses for right. anyone. You know well, I mean? so I mean, it's just funny, right? Because I came here as an immigrant too, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know. We, we actually, are, call, we have a saying for are. that, the immigrant mentality. Uh, so, because you don't, we don't want to go back there. Right. So we do, we're going to do, no matter what we do, we're going to have to do it because we don't want to go back there. Right. We, we, don't have to, we, have we don't want to. We don't want to feel the pain from back I, there. Um, I think I want to write a book one day uh, called uh, work, "Work Like an Immigrant." Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good book. Well, yeah. I think it was the uh, uh, the millionaire next door. They talk about that, yeah. right? That, like, most most millionaires. I haven't read are that, and I keep hearing most really good things about that book. Yeah, like more than half the millionaires are immigrants because they yeah. don't know any better. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so let's see what else is there. Uh, Brandon Simmons, what's up, Brandon? He wants to know what's your <laughs> favorite way <laughs> to recharge or sharpen the saw. So you can be even more focused. Um, you know what? 
Uh, Having a partner definitely helps with that. Yeah, I think we kind of just <laughs> sharpen each other, each yeah, other yeah, man. man, every day. Yeah. Like, But I will say resetting, resetting is amazing. And I'll give you a small example, okay? Um, if you take a nice trip somewhere, you know, and, and just kind of reset, mm-hmm. and you come back, you come back focused, you come back hungry, you come back ready, ready for the next, you know, what's next, right? Um, even here at home, you know, I would say, like, I'll give you an example. We've been promoting our event, the All in REI event, um, June 8th, June 9th, um, at the Hyatt uh, up in Enjoy. Scottsdale, right? Ganey yeah. Ranch. And um, I, I've been kind of stressed out a little bit, you know, because we, we got a lot, like, we got a lot on our plate. You know, we're, 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 we're the guys that are coming are heavy hitters already. They're $100,000 a month producers already. Yeah. So we got to really bring it on those days, right? Right. The, you know, you got to level up. It's big boys, right? Big boy time. So. Um, I was really stressed out, and on Sunday I came. I, I went home. The family was uh, barbecuing in the backyard, like we do. Like ever since we got, I got. Think uh, God blessed me with an estate, forty five hundred square foot house. You know, two separate wings. I got a a, a nice pool in the back, jacuzzi, everything. Right, beautiful yeah. place, huge backyard. And it's uh, it's over an acre. Well, let and me know when the next one is. For sure, for sure. <laughs> so ever since God blessed me with this estate, for some reason every Sunday we throw a barbecue now, right? Like yeah. it's like you know, it, it's like it's, it's like you know how when you when people when people never have, and mm-hmm. then they have, they they really take advantage of of having. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like if you didn't have a car. Uh, you know, and, and you get a car, you start driving everywhere, right? So that's how we've been treating this backyard. So I came <laughs> home. Uh, my my brother in law, who happens to be my acquisitions guy, our, he's our top producer. This guy produces over two hundred thousand in gross revenue a month for yeah. our company by himself. Wow. So shout out to Adrian Salgado. Definitely. Um, so uh, I came home, and he's like, he breaks out a cigar, and uh, and family's barbecuing, and my daughter's in the pool. And, uh, and then I just reset. I just started feeling really, my stress, my, you know, my, my pressure kind of went away. So I think resetting is very Even if you important. do a staycation, yeah. just go somewhere, staycation, just clear your mind because it can't be just work, 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 which right. is very important to work. But you should know when it's time to reset and, and kind of reflect on why you're doing this, what right. you need to do. And most of the times we actually come up with a new idea, it's on an airplane. So we go oh, yeah. on the yeah. way back. Yeah. yeah, We're actually. Oh my God, we've we taken have so notes, many notes, and yeah. they're always on the airplane. So we sit next to each other, and we're like bouncing ideas. Okay, we're gonna do this now. We're gonna do this now because you know it's, our mind is more clear instead yeah. of the day. You know, you're being bu- you're busy every yeah, day. You're in the weeds. So yeah. I was at a strategic coach in Santa Monica yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, nice. as, as, as an incredible event, and one of the things they talk about is you know we have this we're entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. right? So we we work on entrepreneur time but we're still set on the time and effort uh, economy. Mm-hmm. So we're thinking like we got to work 40 hours, 50, 60 hours, when really we just need to get stuff done. That's we it. need to get results. There, there's a difference between being busy and being productive. Right. Mm-hmm. So For you sure. have, and in order to be productive and, be, and, 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 and create those results is you got to reset. Absolutely. You got to yeah. take time off. If you're not taking time off, you're going to lose that creativity. So like mm-hmm. when you said your best ideas come on the plane, that goes back to what you know I learned yesterday about uh, Stepping the, outside the box and exactly. Yeah. Uh, and real quick, our team mm-hmm. also, <laughs> our team, they're a bunch of hungry wolves. They're sharks, and they definitely keep us on our toes. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. and that's another thing. Think about it this way: um, we have people that depend on us winning. Right. They want to win, so we have we have to bring it every day too. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're hungry. Yeah, and that's what keeps me up too. Yeah. You know, I I got I got sixty guys that work at our office, and they're heavy hitters. Oh, heavy nice. heavy hitters. Awesome. And so I got to stay on my game because mm-hmm. if I don't, what value do I provide? And exactly. take care of your guys. You know yeah. what? We take every two weeks, they get a massage. Yeah. Um, Corporate massage. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we take, take, them, take to them to like nice City dinners Hall, and Nashville's, stuff like yeah. that. You know, cool. when it's we time to recognize, you know, the hard work. Absolutely. We take team, care of our team guys. Outings, yep. definitely, so. Team outings. Team culture. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got some bad news. Uh, Daniel Prito says that Brian Buffini already wrote The Immigrant Edge. Uh, well, that's called the immigrant edge. <laughs> 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 so, all right. Uh, Brandon Nose wants to know, what's the worst business decision you ever made? Business what? Decision. The worst business? Uh, you know what? You, I think you have to be very careful with hiring. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hiring is a big deal, right? Would you say? Yeah, they waste your time, energy, and money, and resources yeah. all at the same time. So how do you screen them before it's too late? Uh, well, now it's easy. 
they have to align with our core values. Mm -hmm. So just like Traction says, right. they have to literally align with our core values. And as soon as you see something, like if you catch a lie or as soon as you see something, cut we the put cord, them on a 60 man. day trial right away. Yeah, as yeah, soon as they the come in, they understand there's a trial. But then we like in our interviews, we interview them together. So yeah. imagine someone new, how nerve wracking two people interviewing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, we dropped the whole, we dropped the book And we them. ask every question. <laughs> Real get, questions. Like, so let me ask you this, because I have this problem too, right? I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I see the best in everybody. So do I. I see that in you. I mean, do you see this problem at all? Like I have someone else now, like, hey, you go interview him first mm -hmm. to let me know if I should talk to them. Because I, I don't trust myself. I, I, I see on the, the best in anymore. everybody, but now we have developed a, a kind of another, like sense. a sixth sense mm -hmm. of, you know, why is this, why is this person really here? Yeah. What is this person trying to accomplish? You know what I mean? All right. So, um, we, you know, we, we kind of see the intentions behind that person mm -hmm. and, uh, it's very easy. Yeah. Understanding uh, what their why is, ask yeah. them background question. What's their goal? What ask them what's the first thing they ever did for yeah. a living. Well, or not, not for a living. What is the first thing you ever, I learned this from Brandon Simmons. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing you ever did to get money? All right. That's Whether, when you were a child, a teenager, you know, Again, you want to hire some loyal, mm -hmm. ethical hustlers on your team. Yeah, before we are disposition manager, and if he's listening, the guy is Jaden Putney. Jaden Putney, that guy is is a machine too. He were he was an affiliate, and he lived in Apache Junction, which is an hour away from our office. Mm -hmm. He did an hour one way, an hour back for a full year without it's a committed. pay. I'm trying to watch your show on here. And he was he did that you know, as an affiliate without, you know, not an employee. Mm -hmm. Now he's part of our company. He's been there for over a year. The guy's absolutely killing it. He lives in a, in a luxury apartment. He's always in a jacuzzi. He's eating steaks. And it's like Scarface right now. I mean, he has it. He feels like Scarface. He does. He's, only 20, he's only 20 years old, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And this guy sells it. over, for sure, over a million dollars worth of real estate every month. Oh, yeah. well, way over. No, yeah. I mean, this month he's selling what? 20 some properties that already sold and imagine so, and average he's acquisitions he's disposition 20 and that, years old our average yeah. property is 140 something so uh to 20 times yeah, one. 20. Yeah. Yeah, he sells over 2 million yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, what's the and you guys don't have to answer this question what's the biggest assignment fee you guys have ever made oh that's easy the 200 and uh 230 here let me check my instagram uh, yeah <laughs> 27 uh 27 deal wholesale property uh 27 27 deal In package, package deal. okay wholesale deal okay so, uh we actually so we dropped a hundred thousand dollars in earnest out of our own money mm -hmm. to even have a shot at the 27 properties yeah and i can tell you how much that was for give me one second here hey guys we're wrapping up pretty okay. soon so oh, not, I'm, talk, I'm not talking to you guys I'm talking about you guys there if you guys have questions you guys been holding on to it like don't wait uh, and if you guys are seeing value here please share this so that other people see this too I think it was was it 203 yeah. I don't know it's somewhere I don't right there know, man. over yeah. 200,000 in one, one over one 200,000 I mean that's sure. all right yeah that's okay, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it is yeah that's we've right. seen people make over a million in the wholesale deal so hey it is yeah. actually okay yeah 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 very cool all right so um what keeps you guys up at night I'll start with you, Carlos. Uh, I mean, our passion. Like I was yeah. just telling him this morning when I was at the gym, um, I said, "Man, it's if I even if I even like if I'm asleep and I open one eye, my mind's like, all right, you're back on, let's go.' You know what I mean? Yeah. Call this guy, sell this, thing, and blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was trying to sell a property uh, to Josh Galindo this morning at like seven something in the morning. <laughs> you welcome up <laughs> from Vegas, yeah. So, I mean, that honestly, my, my passion for our company, our business, and the potential growth is what keeps me up at night. It's, it's yeah. just hard to shut it down, man. I got to take like sleeping tea. I got I, I to gotta take the neuro drinks with the, mm -hmm. you know, sweet dreams just to try to like relax and go to bed, you know? But there's nothing that you're concerned about or uncertain or fearful no. about, nothing like nope. that. No, not at all, not okay. at all. We have, we have over $800,000 of our own money into flips right now. Mm -hmm. We're not concerned at all. We're cool. not. We'll figure it out. We know. You know why though? We know what it's like to not have anything. Yeah. You get it. So That's even powerful. if we went back down to zero, we'd come right back up. You know how to do it. Yep. How about you? Anything? But, I mean, I stay what up. What keeps you I up at night? <laughs> have you seen this guy's eyes? <laughs> he doesn't sleep. Man. <laughs> Business. That's just you know, just finding new ideas. If 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 I went home mm -hmm. and you know, 
just time to because I want to relax, but I want to work still. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna take on another five, six, seven hours of work. Mm-hmm. What you know? What better place to to he work? Needs a hobby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> work is his hobby. That's um, not a bad thing. That's my hobby too. I love. I, it it love is a hobby. Like it's our passion, but you also need a hobby. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we do have hobbies. We go to the lake. We go yeah. shooting. boat shooting. Maybe yeah. go off roading. So that's just a weekend. You know, kind of. You know, but we're we're addicted. We're it's, you we're can't. like meth addicts. It's a lifestyle. So I had a post so back you know, a few few months back, and I, as people say, you need to calm down, relax. You're working too much, and like they and this is that. friends that say that, and people like family. Yeah, like it's crazy. You don't enjoy life. I'm like, I'm like this is I, this I is enjoy our this. lifestyle. I enjoy this. Our you conversation. I mean? If I'm going somewhere out somewhere, and I'm just having a blah conversation. To me, it's gonna be blah, but to them, they're probably. Oh, they're talking about you know how they saw a nice flower or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, nice no, flower. That's not, I, I enjoy can't. talking business. Yeah, right. yeah, that puts a smile on my face. So that's your passion. It's and, tough. Yeah. I think that's a really, really difficult thing to do, is when you have to unwind and talk about like, even sports. You know, yeah. I remember growing up, I used to love talk. I can't tell you right now. I know that LeBron James is down two games. You know, I, he's, yeah, I know that um, uh, I don't know what's going on with the Rockets and Warriors. But, again, I don't know much. I, I'm a sport. I, you know, I still play ball on Mondays and Wednesdays in, in several leagues. That's a hobby for me. Oh, we're going to have to talk we're about gonna that. We're going to have to. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but, you see, but I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't yeah. have – I don't have um, – I have I have an 80-inch TV uh-huh. for my daughter, and she watches Netflix. <laughs> I don't have – I don't have direct TV. I don't have Cox. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Yeah. I don't have it. You know. I'd rather you know run some comparables at home or read, a, read book. a book. Yeah. Right. So I, it's tough for me to like to 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 pull that switch or to switch it. Where you know I'm around friends and let's talk about sports. You well, know? you can't, right? So like uh, you know your passion. This is your passion. Obviously, yeah. you wouldn't be successful and that, as successful as you guys are as you guys are if you guys didn't have that passion. I think Steve Jobs said right. You have to have that passion because there are gonna be days that are just gonna suck. Mm-hmm. And we do and know that, the, that passion. We we do know that this that. The, the passion is going to eventually kill us. You know what I mean? Like double edged no, sword. No. It is a double edged sword. So that's why you have to you have to balance. We yeah. always talk about balancing. You that's know? why we have the massages every Wednesday at yeah. our at our, uh, at our office. Every Wednesday. What time should I stop by? Uh, one p.m. Yeah. <laughs> no, <listen. laughs> so. All right. So uh, John Merchef wants to know: Do you guys have your real estate or broker's license? No. We um. So we are. Fifty percent owners of a brokerage. Mm-hmm. Um, but through we're not, we're not licensed through a, through our designated broker. Mm-hmm. Um, we're partners, yeah. but we're not licensed. Yeah, no, that's the best way to do it. Uh, so, and then, what pisses you guys off? We actually unethical we, people. Unethical yeah. people. Let's talk about that. Oh Slime balls. So what are, what are some you, examples? If you have, so I did disposition for a long time for our company. I used to mm-hmm. sell the properties and yeah. you know, selling cars was my thing. And mm-hmm. I'm not a sleazy car salesman. You I want the car dealers, <laughs> but you know, selling selling properties that I love doing that thing. Right. You know, it's my thing. And if you're dealing with someone that looks into your pockets, how much you're making, even if even if even if you feel good about it, just he, like you kind of feel that he's counting your your money, just bounce go to the next one mm-hmm. you don't want people to count your money they don't understand how much marketing how many hours you spend how many employees that depend on overhead like, etc all you that know, like, and they see oh you're making 20 30 000, 40, are you talking 000. about the buyer on your deals on oh, the buyers yeah absolutely and then of course you got some people that see that you're new blood and mm-hmm. they want to take advantage of you as a, because they see you putting the work and like we say, we have affiliates. We take care of our affiliates. We, yeah. we, we have a deal that happened a year later with our, that's in our system and they brought the deal. We reach out to them, hey guys, this was your deal and we converted and, you, and you're making money now. Yeah. But you, unfortunately, you will have a lot of people that will uh, sweet talk to you because they see you hustling and then you feel good talking to them because they're big in the game mm-hmm. and they'll take advantage of you. So just be careful from that. Yeah. Um, I think that that especially, pisses me off a lot, and especially from people who teach the wrong methods right. uh, coming up. The gurus. Yeah, not just the gurus. There are some people that teach the wrong methods just because they're unethical. So yeah. so there was a guy, uh, and, and I know that we got to get through this, but um, there was literally a, a guy who, who gave, I'm not going to say the name of that guru, mm-hmm. gave that guy $9,000 to be part of, you know, part of a club or a room, right? Mm-hmm. And the guy didn't get one deal. The guy just kept telling him, send more mail, send more mail. You can't do that. Right. Uh, you're going to literally bankrupt this guy. 
This guy hasn't got one deal, and you're telling him to spend a lot of money? Where do you think that's going to end? That's a double negative. All right. So that's why we, we, we really, you know, it's not that we despise the gurus or whatever, but we feel like that's not real value. It's really mm-hmm. not real value, and just people keep falling for it. Yeah. But the mo- the thing that pisses me off the most is someone not keeping their word for sure. Yeah, integrity. That's integrity. one of your core values. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let's see. So I think that's it for for the question. So hey guys, we're wrapping up the show. Uh, if you like this show, please turn on your notifications. We're doing this every Wednesday at two p.m. <laughs> live here, um, and share with your friends. You know, share this with all your buddies. I think I want to get back. You know, I've gotten. Uh, a lot of benefit from what I've learned hanging out with these guys. It's really it's a lot of fun. Um, we actually but, have an upcoming event. Oh yeah, event. I'm gonna get there. But yeah, make sure you guys share this uh, so that you guys can learn this and share this knowledge with your, with everybody else. You know, the real estate disruptors. That's our movement, um, and we want to you know 100 millionaires. That's my commitment. That's what I want to develop. Mm-hmm. So if you want to join the movement? Please help me get this message out there. And hey, I think there was so much value here. I thought this was going to be like 30 minutes. We're at almost oh, an, are we done? We're almost an hour and a half. So this is crazy. So <laughs> We can do this all day, man. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> if you guys got value from this, then uh, Carlos and Sal have an event coming up June 8th, June 9th. June 8th, June 9th is called uh, All In REI. You can yeah. um, you can get the information on allinflipping.com. Right. And we're going to teach people a lot of the strategies that is producing you know, personally for our company, three to 500K every single month yep. in gross revenue. Um, so we're going to teach those methods. We're and actually going to expose our business. We're going to pretty much just open pull the, the curtain. Pull the curtain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sure. And show them everything that we do. Right. Uh, so, and that's all in flipping.com. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can tell you, I'm in a lot of coaching events. I go to a lot of these things. You think you learn something here? 100% absolutely you do. But having these guys break down your business. Oh, yeah open the, pull back the curtains, Mm -hmm. you're going to make whatever you put in this and more. That's our goal. Our goal, you know, a lot of guys that are actually coming, um, they're seven figure a year guys already. So like I said, we really have to bring it because we know how much value can you really bring a seven figure guy, right? Right. You have to really take them over the edge and show them something that they don't know. And that's Mm -hmm. what we're going to do at that event. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was amazing. All right. Thank you, guys. Till next time.